Welcome to the Daily Mill for Tuesday, the 26th of January 2021. A lot going on today, a lot going on. So let's just jump straight into it. We're going to hear this is from Mill FC Twitter, and there was supposed to be under 23 game this morning at 1, uh, 1 p.m. And Conor Mahoney was supposed to be uh, playing in that game to get a bit of match fitness. That game was called off due to a frozen pitch. That was supposed to be against QPR at home. Uh, frozen pitch called that one off. Going on to the main event. Um, at uh, 7 p.m. kickoff. Neil Wall. Neil Watford. Neil. This is from LondonFootballScene.co.uk. This is by Ryan Loftus. And what we got here is Mill played out a hard fought goalless draw against promotion chasing Watford at a wet and windy den. The first half saw both sides keep their shape well and struggle to break each other down, although Watford had the better of the early chances. Mill debutant Michael Keftenbeld had to be on hand to clear off the line after Tom Clevery, Clever Lee free kick was nodded onto the post while Ishmael Lee. Uh, Sars closer range effort under pressure from Sean Hutchinson could not find its way between Bart Biakowski's legs. However, Millwall could have gone into the break ahead thanks to two Jake Cooper headers in the first half stoppage time. The first strike in the post as he climbed to meet Ryan was Cross's field ball and his second from a Jed Wallace free kick ruled out for offside two minutes later. Watford had the better of the second period as well but struggled to create anything clear cut. Nathan Chalabar's long-range effort and Troy Deeney's acrobatic follow-up forced Biakowski into action, but were as close as the Ornits came. And then we go down here, they got key points. Key moment, Jake Cooper's goal that was ruled out for offside on the stroke of our time could have been a massive turning point in not just this game, but Mill's season. Um, yeah, I haven't. Uh, I saw that in real time. I didn't know what was going on there. Um, I, haven't, uh, I haven't looked back at the highlights because they're not up yet, but... I don't think, I'm pretty sure that was an offside. I don't know. Have to have another look at that. Moan in the match. Mills pitches in urgent need of repair. Mixed with the cold wet weather, it cost a few players their footing throughout. Yep, and the ball was sticking a bit as well when it was um, being played along the floor. It was sticking quite a bit. But also on the other hand, when you they would put in kind of mid-range in the air passes with a bit of backspin on that helped they would hit the ground then the bounce would be taken out of them but yep yeah. says so this is Mill's second solid display against the promotion chase inside recently can they start to deliver against those around them to propel themselves up the table mm-hmm okay man in the match Mako Captain Bell the debutant will have endeared himself to lines faithful with this display composed on the ball and strong in a tackle yep yeah. and Coming into the game, we were told he was like a DMC that he would he would the kind of player would sit in front of the centre backs and kind of act as a, like a gatekeeper. What we saw actually was Gary Rowett played him out as at, he was the most further forward of the three centre midfielders. Um, not for his passing ability, he he did all right in passing. He didn't have much, that much of the ball. But I think he was played to like break them up before they got further forward, just to try and get the ball back earlier and further up the pitch, so we could try and counter. But that didn't really happen. There wasn't a lot going on. And tweet of the match from Phil Clark. This is by a breakaway goal. I think this is a typical Rowett team performance. Hard working, industrious, sitting deep with plenty of players behind the ball. If you want attacking football. Gary Rowe isn't your man. Hmm. <clears throat> yep. Yeah. Well, that's probably true. Referee watch. Yeah. They moan about the referee. Um. One thing about the referee was a bit happy with his yellow cards, but Nathan Chalabar kind of ran into the back of uh, Ryan Woods with a forearm smash right in front of the referee. We got a free kick. He did. I mean, you could argue that was a red card, and he didn't even give the guy a yellow card. You run in the back of someone blindsided, they don't know you're there, and you smash, you literally forearm smashed him in the back of the head. You know how Ryan with such a little guy. And like, that, no card at all, that was a bit. Uh, atmosphere, the game threatened to get a, a bit heated at one point, a real old school tough game on a cold wet and muddy Tuesday night. Um, yeah, I don't know about that. 
a verdict. A good point on the night for the Lions against a strong Watford side. A typically defensive and solid performance against a better side, but they will still need to find some attacking threat. Yep. Um, yeah, I think you can see here that the lineup, the 5 3 2. I think it was more kind of free, too wide, free two. So the McNamara and um, it was on. Was it Malone? McNamara and Malone were f kind of further forward. Um, yeah, so it was kind of a five-three-two come three-five-two. Um, yeah. Anyway, moving on. We're going to move on now to. This from the news then dot co dot uk. This is a match report. Uh, it says Millwall's wretched home form continued on Tuesday evening, while Garrett's Matt Rowett's men collected a deserved point against promotion chasers in Watford in a goalless draw in SC16. It's now ten without victory in all competitions at the Den for the Lions, who have only taken fourteen points from their twelve home championship matches. Although the point was enough to move them above Cardiff and up to fifteenth in the second tier standings. If you look on the right hand side, there you can see the table there. 30 points, minus 3 goal difference, play 25, Cardiff uh, play 24, 29 points. Um, Huddersfield played today and they are away to Bristol City, they lost 2-1. So there was a bit of a gap um, above us, that's, that's vanished away now. Although there is still a gap to loot and a 3 points, so you, you were kind of hoping that when we do win, if we win, that would be enough to move us further up the table but it seems we're going to have to win more than one to do that because um, just one win and a Luton loss would take us up uh, just above Luton but on goal difference and then we'd have to win more to go further up so anyway it says Jake Cooper crashed against the post in first half stoppage time whilst the same player saw his header seconds later chalked off for an offside in what was a game of few chances for the goal shy Lions. Following a quiet opening third, Mill came close to taking the lead in the 31st minute. Kenneth Sahor showed great strength and control to find Jed Wallace who picked out the onrushing Danny McNamara who was making his competitive home debut for the Lions. The right wing back then galloped forward before sending over a delicious delivery for Zahor but the online West Brom striker failed to connect from point blank range. Moments later Wallace saw his deflected effort comfortably saved by Daniel Bachman before Mill survived with an almighty scare on, on the other end. Cooper conceded a free kick uh, that Tom Keverley whipped in a dangerous position with the ball hitting the Alliance defender before bouncing off the post before Garriott's team eventually cleared the danger. Andre Gray and Troy Deeney then combined but the former was unable to keep his effort down following some neat work by Hornets skipper. Mill needed Sean Hutchinson to make a crucial intervention before Bartosz Biakowski was forced into making his first meaningful save of the evening when he smothered Saar's close range effort. The Lions almost made Watford pay for those missed opportunities right on the stroke of our time. First, Cooper's uh, towering header came off the inside of the post before Mill's centre back was then de denied by an offside flag after heading home Wallace's in swing a free kick as the side somehow went into the break goalless. Ten minutes into the second period, Gray and Deeney combined once again, but the latest effort was deflected behind for a corner by Hutchison before Scott Malone's curling effort with the outside of his boot went wide of the right hand post. Nathan Chalabar uh, was next to go close, but Bukowski palmed away his powerful long range strike for the exit of Twitch Town goalkeeper saved well from Deeney's acrobatic follow up. Both sides pushed hard for a late hard for a late winner, but the second half was a non invent. Although Saar could have stolen it at a death for the visitors, only to fire Hover. Um, it says, less than 48 hours after Michael Keftenbeld was confirmed as the Lions' first January signing, the Dutch midfielder was immediately thrown into the starting eleven for his Millwall debut. Keftenbeld's uh, arrival at, at the Den marked his second time in which he's been signed by Rao, the Lions' boss, initially bringing a 30-year-old to English football during his spell as Birmingham City boss. Despite his lack of minutes at St Andrews this term, he didn't appear short of match sharpness, although that shouldn't come as a great surprise considering he started the Blues win at Preston last Wednesday, one of six appearances he's managed already this calendar year. That's uh, two for, since 2021. Uh, Kefton Bell completed the full 19 minutes of what was a tidy and encouraging first performance in a Millwall shirt. 
Mill still unable to find that home win. Fans or no fans, Mill simply must improve at the den, otherwise they're seriously running the risk of getting dragged into the most unlikeliest of relegation battles. Why this was not... Um, while this was most definitely a point gained against a side that boasts a number of players that are good enough to play in the Premier League, it's just one victory from 12 Championship home games for the Lions. To put that into context, Mill had managed six victories from their opening 12 last term and one fewer the season before that under Harris. So that's from the News of Den, their match report there. Uh, and I think that's a bit harsh. I mean, what for the second in the table and we went out there to get a nil-nil draw because they're arguably a better team than us. And we got the nil-nil draw, you know. We could have nicked it. Uh, they gave Cooper offside, hit the post. They could have won it as well, but we were strong at defending. So, I think that's a good point for Millwall, to be honest with you. Um, if we play like that against uh, Cardiff on uh, Saturday... I can see us winning that and winning against them. Uh, although they've got Mick McCarthy as their manager now and he knows what he's doing. So we'll wait and see about that. So this now is from the London News Online .co.uk, it's the South London Press Online. And it says Gary Rowett provides interesting insight and Mill switch to a 5 3 2 formation. Gary Rowett has explained why Mill have shifted a to a 5 3 2 formation for their last two championship matches. The Lions used the shape in the last Wednesday's 1-0 victory at Huddersfield Town and they also did the same this evening in a stalemate with Watford. Rowett feels that they need more defensive stability because of lack of goals in his side. That's right, if you can't score one goal, if you can keep out the other side from scoring, then you're guaranteed a 0-0 draw, even if your strikers can't score. And if you're lucky, and they do, you can win 1-0. It was the old Arsenal way under George Graham. At the weekend, uh, this is Raul. Raul says, at the weekend, we played essentially 4-4-2 and got opened up all over the pitch. The goals we have conceded have been where we have been too open and have struggled to live with the athleticism of some teams. We played 4-2-3-1 and had the same done to us. We played 5-2-3 and I just felt the front three in some of those games were too high up the pitch and not working back hard enough and keeping the gaps closed. We're a team that need to be compact because they, they can't run around too much. I felt 5-3-2 gives us that start position and that compact shape behind the ball. It allows us to do what we're good at. We play the team tonight, we play 4-4-2 and at times they drop 4 four and, and a 2 behind the ball very deep. A lot of good teams do that. They challenge, the challenge then is they use the ball really well in the transition. It's something we need to improve and work on. We played a lot of formations and struggled to score goals. At the moment, that, that is our team. It means what we have to do is play a formation where we don't concede lots of goals and still have a chance in the attacking sense. And that's it. If you can't score, at least keep a clean sheet. You're going to come away with a nil-nil. And that's what happened today. Um, good nil-nil, I think. Um, but, yeah... Uh, here we go. This is also from the London News Online .co .uk with more post-match comments from Gary Rowett. It says, treat it like an away game. Millwall boss reveals messages to his players before Watford match. Millwall's players were told to approach tonight's den clash with Watford as if it was an away fixture. The Lions have won only once in the championship in SC16 this season, with 19 of their 29 points coming on their travels. And manager Gary Rowett knew his troops could approach the fixture a little differently without supporters in the stadium. Our home form has not been good and I spoke to the players about playing it almost like an away game. There are no fans here. The challenge wasn't to get on the front foot and satisfy anything or anybody. We kept our shape really well in the first half and got into some really good positions. We used the ball well first half. It's unfortunate that Coop sits the inside of the post and it comes back in. He also had a goal lit disallowed which I think is level and is onside. We have a couple of moments the other end where Bart has to make a couple of good saves, but not too many, and had to defend diligently. As the game goes on, you know they're going to keep probing and keep forcing the issue. We had to hang on a little because we weren't passing the ball up well. I would say after the likes of the Forest game, then to go and beat Huddersfield and keep a clean sheet, then to keep a clean sheet at home was a bit more back to where we need to be. Against the side who's got Andre Gray, Saar, a player who Liverpool so he bid 40 million for and it wasn't quite enough. Cleverly, Chalabar, 
They've got Premier League quality players. With Watford, they don't just move the ball well. They can almost outmuscle you. We had to stand up to that tonight. Chalabar had already been booked for a country late contact on Ryan Woods, yeah? That's why I was told you about the forearm smash in the back, Ryan Woods. But referee uh, Jeremy Simpson only punished the midfielder's transgression by awarding a free kick. So he should have got a second yellow card then. He should have been off the pitch. So that's a. Uh, and Rowett says that with no fans, we're all jumping up and down to show our displeasure. I'd have to see it again. They were one or two times. They were, um, were fortunate not to get a second yellow. When Jeremy starts booking people at the start of the game quite easily, then you have to make a big decision later on. The fourth official said to me, was it enough to get sent off? I said it doesn't have to be. It has to be enough for a yellow card. And if it is, then we have to have the sending off. That's, that's how it goes, isn't it? Two yellow cards is, is a, a red card. A yellow card is a yellow card. There, um, there are no complaints from me on that, but I think he was possibly a little fortunate. Rowett was pleased with Michael Keftenbeld's debut. Uh, the Dutchman replaced Sean Williams in the starting lineup after completing a permanent move from Birmingham on Monday. It was an obvious one to go in with the energy and desire he's got. You saw what Michael is. He's a competitive player and his use of the ball is good. Tactically, he knows how to play different formations. He is one I trust and thought he was excellent in there. We need those options because we have changed formation. We don't have lots of players to maintain that energy and that formation. It was certainly something we needed to do. He slotted in seamlessly. And that's the ends there. So that was the story of Mill Neil Watford Neil today. And we're gonna move on. There's even more transfer talk involving Mill Football Club. And this story here, this broke last night, about five minutes after I made uh, yesterday's video. So that was kind of gutting for me. But this is from uh, dailyrecord.co.uk. Uh, it's a Scottish national uh, daily newspaper, but this is their website. It says Ryan Porteous attracting Hibs transfer interest as Millwall plot Jan January swoop for defender. The Easter Road Academy graduate would command a large fee and Hibs are determined to hold on to one of their brightest talents in the winter window. And as we scroll down, it says Millwall keen on Hibs defender Ryan Porteous. The English Championship side are interested in Scotland squad centre-half. The Lions want to add a central defender and Hibstar is current live option for them in this window. It would all come down to Hibs will being willing to sell and their asking price. Porteous is seen as one of the best young defenders in Scotland and has already been called up to Steve Clark's international squad. The 21 year old has come through at the ranks of Easter Road. Uh, he still two, has, has two years left on his contract and it would take a significant offer for Hibs to cash in. Um, and then they carry on about some other stuff. So it seems we're going after this um, this guy here, Ryan Porteous. But um, what goes on generally with these type of players is Celtic and Rangers swoop in and snap up any half decent young Scottish Scottish player from any of the other teams, and if they don't want them then there's very little there's nowhere else for them to go so they generally come down to England and what's been happening lately is that Premier League teams you see Liverpool got uh, and Man United done this with Tom and A and uh, is it Alexander there's there's some uh, um, Scottish player for Liverpool they come they've been coming in and snapping them up even earlier when they're in their teens bringing him down to England so they've been undercutting them even further so that's that means Celtic and Rangers haven't been able to even get the best Scottish players um, they come down to the north of England in the uh, Man United Academy and the uh, Liverpool Academy so Celtic and Rangers are, this is the kind of player that Celtic or, or Rangers would would buy up so if they if they're not looking at this lad um he would suggest that he's not quite at that level and he's he's not he would suggest he's not the cream of the crop in scotland which is uh, um i don't know if that's bad for us it might be all right for us um but we're not getting the best of the best if he comes but maybe he won't be coming because here we go. This is from the londonnewsonline.co.uk. They've been busy today. 
very busy today. It says Millwall not close to Dilfoy, Burnley and Defender, with Scottish press reporting interest in, in uh, January deal. Uh, it says that the Lions interest in a 21-year-old centre-back was reported by the Scottish press earlier this week. It was yesterday, actually. Millwall are looking at a variety of different defensive options with that position now priority after landing midfielder Michael Keftenbell from Birmingham City yesterday. The Daily Record claimed that Portia is one of the top young defenders in Scottish football and any transfer in his, um Yeah, that's basically what I said, what we read from earlier. Uh, yeah, it says Portius has made 24 appearances in, in the Scottish Premiership this season. In total, he's clocked up 76 games for Hibs and scored six times, as well as winning 14 caps at under-21 level for Scotland. Mill have seen their defensive options depleted with Murray Wallace recovering from a broken foot. Central midfielder Ryan Lander played on the right back of their back three in last Wednesday's 1-0 win at Huddersfield Town. Lions manager Gary Rowett told our paper this week that the Championship side were looking to add a younger talent to their squad. He said, I think we've made three bids for different young players. We were trying to bring in some younger players in the group. The group is not as mobile and young as we would like for the long term. It is not about us as a club not paying enough money. No one wants to sell young players. People need bigger squads for COVID reasons in case they get three or four cases. There are more games in a closer period of time. People don't want to let players out. Clubs are not spending money. They don't want to let players go. They can't get players in. So, uh, uh, Gary Rowett seems to be playing, uh, blaming COVID for that um, rather than the low ball offers that we seem to be putting out. But here we go. Moving on, more, even more transfer news, ladies and gentlemen. This is from John Percy. And John, do you know who John Percy is? Well, don't worry, I'll tell you. John Percy is the Midlands football reporter for the Daily Telegraph and the Sunday Telegraph. And it says here, transfer news. This was earlier today. Transfer news. Mill have had a £500,000 bid rejected by Derby County FC for midfielder George Evans. Another bid likely before the transfer window closes. And you can see the, the replies here. It says 1.5 million. Uh, it says, and the next one is 500k, more like 3 mil. And, it's, and the next one says, mm, no, bad Gary Rowett. So, Derby County fans there, um, thinking the lad's um, worth between 1.5 and 3 million. And so there we go with our, our lowball our low offers again. Um, but that might be a cheeky bid because Derby County are in the, the doo-doo. They're in the caca. They've got debt up to their eyeballs. And that's one of the reasons why uh, Wayne Rooney retired from playing and became a full-time manager. Because they needed to save the money. So they're in the crap. So maybe it's just a cheeky bid. But will the, they're not in administration. They they don't need to take the bid. So it's literally going to be like an auction if, they're, if they are selling players. And they'll be putting the feelers out to other clubs saying that might be what this is. And that's, that, that, oh, this team's made a 500k bid. Who want it? Next bid, anyone, 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 you know, auction house, guy on the, the with the gavel, uh, 500 pound bid, for a bit. anyone bid 600, anyone 700, and they might be just trying to get the price up, because they're desperate for money, so it might just be that, um, or who knows, but it seems behind the scenes there are offers going out from Millwall, We've signed one player. We might be signing a defender and another midfielder. Um, so make of that what you will. Um, anyways, we played today. We got a draw, a nil-nil draw. Decent result. Crack on the Saturday against Cardiff away. Uh, thank you for watching. Bye.